Oh, goodness. Okay. So if we were talking to specifically Dell accounting majors, third and fourth year, we've covered a lot of ground. I'm really like, I'm thrilled. I think they've gotten a lot out of it. What else? Like what advice would you give them? It might be program specific. It might be something that I am not expecting at all. So, you know, one of the things that I'm seeing right now um, is a, a bit of a change in the workforce and the demand, right? We're seeing a shift in the labor market here. And I think students may have more agency than they realize right now, you know? So I would say one of my pieces of advice would be, you know, I certainly know there is a sense of kind of wanting to take advantage of opportunities that are presented to you and right, but students should also be making sure that they are finding the right fit and doing, you know, taking the job that kind of most aligns with their, their career goals and culturally seems like a fit. And I think now more than ever, they are able to do that, right? To have that stay and not necessarily feel that as much of a pressure to kind of take the first opportunity that presents itself. So that would be one of my pieces of advice right now for students is, is kind of knowing your worth right now as a potential employee, employee in this, you know, current labor market and making sure you select something that's going to excite you. We spend a lot of time at our jobs. You can't hate going to work every day. You know, it's got to be a good fit for you, right? Um, so. Absolutely. Like what, what are, environment are you working in now? Who are you working with? Um, what are the paths there? Or as well, okay, I'm here for two or three years. What are the opportunities that come after this that could open up? Um, you know, what are the trade-offs? Um, you know, where am I working? How am I working? What does that look like? Do I value um, autonomy and working from home one, one to three, four more days a week? You know, what does that look like? And asking the questions. Um, here's something, because I still need to, I love advocating for others. And, um, you know, one of the ways that I've been able to advocate for myself is knowing that if I want to talk the talk, I better well walk the walk. And so one thing that I've gotten comfortable with is saying, would you consider X? Because it's a way to open the door in a way for me to ask and advocate for myself, but do it in a way that feels authentic to me. Um, so what are your thoughts on if somebody were to want to work from home or want to, want to maybe take a year off, still work with the company, but not do CPA right now? What are your thoughts, Kathleen, if a potential employee during the interview process, you know, maybe they got an offer and they say, love this, love the company, love the fit. Would you consider if I work from home, you know, one to two days a week? What are your thoughts about that kind of approach? I think that... That example in particular, you know, is an interesting one because obviously companies have been adjusting to the work, you know, the virtual work from home and kind of we see that everywhere, right? As companies that that in particular, I think is maybe a concession more willing to make right now because a lot of them were able to implement processes that are working over the last, you know, during the pandemic and kind of see that um, some of those things that felt like mental hurdles early in the pandemic or, you know, that organizations were resistant to, well, we've kind of ironed a lot of it out, right? So in, in particular, working from home, maybe one that students may have a bit of um, a reception to that's, that's warmer than they might have thought, especially if it's an employer that already has some of their workforce doing that, you know, but I, I do think it is um, important for students to be their own advocate and kind of voice what they need, uh, although I can appreciate it's it is challenging when you are interviewing for a job, you know, to, you don't want to overplay your hand. <laughs> Absolutely. And I really, um, let me know if you disagree or agree. I don't think there's a wrong move a student can make. If you're respectful and you're treating others the way in which you would want somebody, in, like if the roles are reversed, where you would still feel respected and valued. If you ask questions and, you know, maybe you decide, you know, I'm so excited about this opportunity. Uh, I'm willing to take whatever, you know, like, um, you know, work however they want me to do, whatever they want. And like, there's no shame in that either, right? We've all been in different positions and different things that make us feel comfortable. And, and that's okay too. So, and some, maybe that's something that you put in the back of your mind and you revisit it six months and you say, hey, I've been here for six months. Um, I'd like to talk about my performance to see if there's anything else I can do to add value to the company. And once they're like, oh, you're amazing. You're like, great. Um, would you consider me working from home? <laughs> Or whatever, you know, include X if you're, it's your passion. So yeah. um, I think that's right on the nose, right? Performance reviews are always a part of the process for new employees. That way you've gotten a chance to back yourself up a little bit, right? And you can show them kind of 
that you are the right person for the job and you are delivering on, you know, what you said you would in that role, it gives you a little bit more opportunity to then kind of reevaluate that. Yeah. Okay. So you just, I like to bounce around because linear is overdone. Um, when you came out to the East coast, like, how did you know it was the right time to leave your, your previous job? Because oftentimes, you know, people will be so excited about getting the job and so excited about the next part of their career. And eventually maybe they're thinking, Hmm, there's something else I want to do, or, you know, I'm not quite sure if now is the time to move on. So we often like to ask, and my students are actually the ones who provided this question. How did you know it was right for you to leave your last job and any regrets? Now that is a difficult one for me to answer, Sam, only because I'm not sure it would be advice I would necessarily give. So with me, it wasn't so much as knowing it was time to leave my job. It was, um, you know, as I said earlier, I, I kind of grew up living in a couple of different countries and places. And so um, I wasn't the type to set down roots for too long. And I was getting to a point where I was ready for a change from the life that I'd had on Vancouver Island for, for you know, a number of years. Um, so I quit my job and I packed up my car and I drove across the country <laughs> with no job and <laughs> nothing lined up exactly, and having no, no, never no. been to Halifax before. <laughs> this is exactly the type of advice that we need to give. It really is, right? <laughs> I do think sometimes you just kind of have to have faith in your in yourself um, and knowing that you'll be able to, to land, right? And, and I did. And um it, you know, me and my dog made the trip and it was great. <laughs> so. I love this. By the way, you aren't the first person on this podcast to basically do that, to quit their job, hop in the car and drive across the country. The other person went the other way. Um, but no, but it's so true. It's because sometimes it isn't so much about like having the perfect path lined up or having all the boxes too. Sometimes it's like, listen to yourself. And like you said, having the faith that you have the tools to figure it out and then figuring it out. Thank you. Thank